at the end of the day, what began as wanton criminality worked out for the best for the victim, Chase remained true to himself, and his ideals ended up winning him new allies, and together they steered the course of fate back to its proper conclusion. Justice has been served. At least half of it. As for the criminals themselves, they are still at large, and the news is quickly tightening around everyone in the Undercity. From Piltover's perspective, there's a bunch of people skulking about right across the river, who are casually ransacking apartments, and blowing them up for good measure. To quell the, let's be fair, reasonable worry, the powers that be embolden their officers to seek out the guilty party using any means necessary, and the enforcers tackle their duty aggressively, violent interrogations, everyone is guilty until proven innocent, and the only way to prove oneself innocent is to give up the felons hiding amongst the blameless. It's a bad time to be living in the Undercity. So what better time could there be to spend a late back afternoon in a noisy arcade? Wait, what? Remind me why we bother with this dump. Vander said to lay low. Enforcers never come down here, so this is as good a place as any. No. By definition, this is not as good of a place as any. You see this room, this room right here, your home, in the cellar of the bar your dad owns, the one with a built-in alarm system in the case of unwanted visitors, that room, remember that? You see, the reason why enforcers don't come around here is that normally they have no reason to. The Enforcers usually don't patrol the Undercity, period. You have invited their presence by mucking up royally. This is a new situation, the usual assumed rules no longer apply. If you want to mess around with your silly games and such, because you are bored and don't feel like staying home where it's safe, because you don't give a flying fuck about the world burning around you, then just say so, own it. Don't peddle this nonsense, it doesn't logic all that well, makes you look like an idiot. I have no idea how Vander allowed you to strut away from the bar, I would have thought him to have more keen eye than this. Oh and look, it just so happens that the enforcers are right there outside the arcade, led by Marcus himself. And a big old chase scene is about to begin, another one, that is. It's almost as if someone wanted the plot to unfold in a certain way, and makes everyone into a moron in order to make that happen. Hey guys, you should see this. So... that guy is dead, right? The amount of force needed to hurl a full-grown man through a window and making him tumble several meters after the fact. I know it's animated, but that doesn't mean you have to make the physics Looney Tunes cartoony when you are trying to create a dramatic scene. Search them. No, what? Why are you searching them? The phrase you are looking for is, oh, for children. Exactly like the four children seeing fleeing the scene. I know this because I'm smart and asked for description from the people who literally saw them fleeing. My fellow enforcers, let's cuff the twerps, drag them back topside, squeeze the truth out of them. We literally have the authorization to do so. And I myself just so happen to hate all of these people with a burning passion, so I have zero moral qualms about roughhousing them. You didn't search that guy, you asked him a question, and then went full on police brutality. And what exactly are you imagining to find? Do you honestly think that the criminals would be so unbelievably idiotic to have the stolen goods on their person, the following day, 
Even though they have had all the time in the world to come up with a place to stash their loot. Nothing can tie you to what happened up there. Nothing can tie you to what happened up there. Nothing can tie you to what happened up there. Nothing can tie you to what happened up there. Hello darkness, my old friend. It's almost as if someone wanted the plot to unfold in a certain way and makes everyone into a moron in order to make that happen. This entire scene that follows is a grand cavalcade of dumb. It's the exact same as the chase from episode 1. It's forced, no one acts as a human being would, no one has the capabilities a normal human being would, the literal children apparently have a superhuman edge over the adults trying to arrest them. No reason to go over every minute detail, it's all just brain meltingly stupid. But here's some highlights. Look at this. Look at how close Powder is in relation to Marcus. There is no way that a tiny girl will be able to outrun a full grown, trained officer of the law just because she gets half a second head start. Fuck off show, actually fuck off at this point. This gag is tiresome. The enforcers need to catch only one of the kids, just one, any one of them, and the rest of them are fucked. But that's not what happens. The lights go out, not even fully, the neon lights keep blazing on, and the officers just go and get their shit pushed in. To whom is this entertaining? This is lame. It's Crap! Impossible to take seriously. Here I was, thinking we were following a sincere story about the nature of right and wrong, and the consequences of one's actions, and then we get offered this Disney Channel rubbish. I hate that I have to keep harping on this, but the show just insists making this into a major plot point. The enforcers, the most immediate threat to the protagonist, her family and friends, as well as the great big boogeyman of the entire Undercity, are incompetent tools. These aren't even the goofy stooges with funny derp faces from before. Nope, no longer. They've put on the Hellgas Stormtrooper gas masks. By the laws of pop culture, these guys should be taken seriously. It's not fun and games anymore. Shit, as they say, should have gotten real. But no, it's just shit. And what's even more depressing, this scene has no reason to exist. The plot is running in circles. The kids have revealed themselves twice. Their faces are known. Nothing has changed from the previous time this happened. They screwed up once. And now they screwed up once more. They can never leave their house again. It's game over. Just like it was game over the previous day. Or it would be if the opposition were capable. The obvious way to handle this episode would have been to have it so that the kids are grounded. Under the watchful eye of Vander. They wait for the situation to blow over only to hear about the brutalizing happening across town because of what they did. The community holds out strong, no one is willing to rat out one of their own, things are looking ill, the kids feel bad, perhaps their empathy and thankfulness for their fellow Undercity folk makes them seem a bit more sympathetic to the audience. I have no sympathy for idiots who succeed because of plot armor. That's it, man. It's game over, man. It's game over! You need to hide those crystals. Yeah, no shit. And in case anyone laments the loss of characterization from the lack of carnival games... Oh look, why spars with a robot? That's how she can punch so good? Oh look! Powder aces the shooting range, and that's how she can shoot so good. As much as memorizing a preset sequence of strikes makes you a proficient boxer, 
and as much as handling a pellet gun with absolutely no weight or recoil makes you a marksman. Uh, if this is valuable enough that it can't be cut under any circumstances, then there is still an easy fix. Just write it so that the basement is a tad larger and have the games exist there. You can have the rest of this be the exact same while carving away the dumb. Now I can't be certain of this, but I have a hunch that part of the reason this scene exists the way that it does is due to some kind of mandate for action. Without this scene, episode 2 would be the only one in the show lacking an adrenaline pumping moment where characters move a lot and stuff happens fast. Because that's what's exciting. Stuff happening fast. Not stuff happening logically, and characters being smart. Just a lot of movement, and the soundtrack telling you this is intense. I for one would have been perfectly content with a pure drama episode. Characters and dialogue are the show's strongest material. The more the better. Thankfully, despite the plot stumbling into inane crap from time to time, the character moments stemming from these developments are solid. Since the Enforcers are in fact incapable of locating and capturing a bunch of kids on their own, they are pointed to the right direction by a concerned citizen. Silco approaches Marcus with a sinister deal. He'll reveal the kid's hidey hole in exchange for a favor or few down the line. No, don't look so concerned. I'm about to make your day. I'm sure nothing will go horribly wrong here. Just look at him. If that isn't a face you can trust, I don't know what is. And the ensuing dick measuring contest between Marcus and Vander is rather entertaining. Marcus burrowing right under Vander's skin by bringing up ghosts from the past. And the hound of the underworld flashing his fangs once more. I ran into an old friend of yours. <laughs> he had some stories. You weren't always the peacekeeper, were you? Yeah, well, you can't escape the past, right? It's a shame if I had to put them on again. I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I'll keep giving the show kudos for this. Characters, well established, being engaging, saying interesting things. This is where the writing of Arcane excels. It's just a shame that the plot, which justifies these moments, is nowhere near as well thought out. As a prime example, at the very moment this enjoyable dialogue is happening, the plot is being thoroughly retarded the next room over. While the enforcers sweep the bar in search of the kids, they find a brilliant hiding place from, I kid you not, the uncovered pipework in the ceiling. This utter incompetent special needs diversity hire finger sniffing kale for brains doesn't think to swat his torch across the ceiling just for shits and giggles. Really? And the moment he leaves, powder thumps to the floor loudly. And the imbecile doesn't immediately go back and check what could have possibly made such a noise. This is horrendous. The enforcers are made into a complete joke. Humiliated for a third time in a row, the only reason the lead characters succeed is that their opposition is letting them win. Basic intelligence is tossed out the window, the laws of physics bent to serve the needs of the narrative, the volume of multi-layered plot armor is embarrassing. You could use these scenes in a parody and they would be indistinguishable from the rest. We kicked the Enforcer's butts with just the four of us. Imagine what the whole of the lanes could do. Jeez, even Powder wants to fight. So why aren't we? An excellent question. This is how you kill stakes. If the threat of an opponent is non-existent, as shown on screen, then there is no drama in facing said opponent. The Enforcers are a bunch of marshmallow men and the literal children of the Undercity are the equivalent of flamethrowers. Why exactly the peasants haven't forcefully claimed their independence? 
or whatever it is that they want is a mystery. Just remember, there is always, always a way to achieve the end point you desire for your story, while having things leading to it make basic level of sense. Take a moment to think, be critical of yourself, and redraft. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for sticking around for this long. And a special thanks to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, Six Stars, Danny Kicks, and Adon Adaniel. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.